What's going on guys, JP back at you once again bringing you guys another video. So today's video is actually something I'm super excited about. This is going to be part one in a 12 part series chronicling every film that I watched in the year 2020. Now this is an idea that I've kicked around for years. Ever since the year 2011, way before Letterboxd, I was keeping track of every movie I watched. I used to only keep track of the horror films, but eventually I kept track of everything. I started this out with a word pad. I would download the poster of the movie that I watched and I would put it in a word pad and then I would give my rating under it and I would give the title of the movie. And then eventually I'd use the notepad and then a spreadsheet and then eventually Letterbox came around and made it really convenient. So now I use Letterbox. But I've been keeping track since 2011 and every year since 2011 I've watched more and more movies. I think one year I had a tie with the exact same amount. But pretty much every year I increase the amount of films that I watch from like 68 movies in 2011 all the way up to over 500 here in 2020. It's pretty insane. I've always wanted to do a video telling and showing you guys the movies that I watched. I guess now is finally the time to do that. I knew that it was going to be a huge undertaking and the editing was going to be insane so a little peek behind the curtain. I'm actually recording these well before 2020 is over. You won't see it until 2021. So we got 12 videos which means each video is going to cover one month of the journey of 2020. The first video here of course we're starting with January. A uh, little side note, I'm going to rate these films but I'm going to use the letterboxed ratings. I normally rate out of 10 but I have everything in front of me in letterboxed so I'm going to go with the out of 5 rating. So some of these movies are first time watches, some of these films are my favorite movies, some of the films that I watched are titles that are horrible, some of them are amazing, some of them blew me away, some of them I won't even be able to remember. But there is well over 500 titles that I'm going to get to. These videos are going to run a little long probably. I was initially going to put them into one video but I figured that would be insanely stupid of me so it's gonna be 12 parts so with that said let's jump into it January 2020 I watched 38 movies which is pretty decent I usually try to hit one a week so the very first movie I watched in 2020 keep in mind I had just come off of prepping for the year-end show on 22 shots for the year 2019 so I was watching tons of movies during November and December completely burnt out January comes around, it's always such a relaxing feeling because all the prep is over, all the hard work is done, now I can just relax for a little bit, and the very first movie I watched fit that mood. It was Stand By Me from the year 1986, and this is an absolute classic based on a Stephen King novel, it's coming of age, very relatable characters, I had just recently picked up the 4K and I wanted to check it out, absolutely loved it, 5 out of 5. Movie number two was The New Kids from 1985. I just mentioned about prepping for things and feeling a relief not having to. Well, I jumped right into prepping for our top 10 of 1985 and I watched The New Kids, which was a Sean S. Cunningham film. He directed it actually, which normally he kind of produced things. Of course, Sean S. Cunningham from Friday the 13th fame. It's not a bad movie. It's about a brother and sister, a little light on the horror. There's some bullies and stuff like that kind of more action. I give it a three and a half out of five. The third movie I watched was Don't F With Cats, The Hunting of a Internet Killer from the year 2019. This was a Netflix original crime drama documentary thing. Netflix, I give them a lot of crap, but their crime, true crime stuff is awesome. Their documentaries always are great. Don't F With Cats was insane. It was like a mini series, I think like four episodes. It was crazy. I gave it a four out of five. The fourth movie I watched was Warning Sign from the year 1985. Don't really remember a ton about this. I think it was like an infection film. It was okay, I gave it a three out of five. Movie number five was a favorite of mine. It is Ice Cream Man from the year 1995. I watched it on Vinegar Syndrome, which is a great blu-ray they put out. Clint Howard is awesome in this movie. It's kind of a weird borderline like almost kids film but still rated R weird thing. That's a three and a half out of five. 
Next up, we have Chud 2, Bud the Chud from the year 1989, and Chud 2 sucks. It's just not good. I had it in the Vestron Collector series. It's a weird movie. I had heard that it was originally planned as a Return of the Living Dead sequel, and it feels like that and not a Chud sequel. Even though Chud is still mentioned, it really has nothing to do with the Chuds we know from the original Chud film. It's pretty bad. I gave it a one and a half out of five. After that, we have my first theatrical watch, and it was The Grudge from the year 2020, the Sam Raimi produced remake. This movie was pretty dang crappy. I really didn't like it at all. It started off okay and it just went straight downhill. It was pretty garbage. I give it a one and a half out of five. I was working my way through the Star Wars films in 2019 and I decided to continue on here in 2020 with Star Wars Episode 2, Attack of the Clones from the year 2002. I actually don't mind this movie. I don't think it's amazing or anything like that, but I probably like it more than most Star Wars fans. I gave it a three and a half out of five. Then we have The Bat People from the year 1974. I don't really remember much about this film other than it was like a bat movie or like someone was turning into a bat. I think there was a song that was kind of catchy in it or had to do with the bat people. I don't really remember, but it was all right for my rating. It's a three out of five. Then on 22 shots, we were covering a couple of mockumentaries, some found footage films, and one of the titles was Lake Mungo from 2008. This was actually a film that was part of the After Dark Horror Fest year four, I think, eight films to die for. It's pretty creepy, uh, very well done Australian found footage film. I gave it a three out of five. Also on that episode was The Bay from the year 2012. This is a, another mockumentary, but it's super well done. It's, it's really creepy about pollution and stuff like that. I really enjoyed it. That's a four out of five. Then we have The Quick and the Dead from the year 1995. This is a Sam Raimi film. Looks very Raimi too. There's all these crazy camera work and insane stuff. Tons of character actors in this awesome movie. I really enjoy it. It's a western. I give it a four out of five. Then we have The Brain from the year 1988. This is a film that Scream Factory released. People wanted it on disc forever. Finally got a release. I checked it out. It's a giant brain creature feature thing. It's pretty fun. I don't really remember much about it, but it's a giant freaking brain. I gave it a three and a half out of five. Then I had a real treat by seeing Misery from the year 1990 in the theater, a Stephen King classic. It was the perfect time to watch it. It was January, Misery takes place in the snow a little bit. Perfect time, amazing seeing it in the theater. Such a good experience. I give that a five out of five. I checked out The House by the Cemetery from the year 1981. This is a Lucio Fulci film. I had never really loved it, but the more times I see it, the more I like it, and watching it this time, I really enjoyed it. I think I checked out the three disc Blu-ray that Blue Underground released. It's a pretty dope movie, and I definitely have grown to love it. I gave it a three and a half out of five. Then I revisited The Green Room from the year 2015, and I absolutely loved it. It is such a good movie. It made my top 10 from 2015 or 16, but it would be much higher now. It's amazing. Great performances in that one. I gave it a four and a half out of five. Then I watched Fright Night from the year 2011. I wanted to check out the remake. I hadn't seen it in a really long time, but I've always kind of liked it. So I gave it a watch and it holds up. I think it's a really solid remake. I was kind of on an Anton Yelchin kick, rest in peace. I think he's a pretty awesome actor. Died way too soon. I gave that remake a three and a half out of five. Then I watched Billy Club from the year 2013. It's sort of an independent slasher. Didn't really remember a whole lot about it, but I did enjoy it. Gave it a three and a half out of five. After that, another theatrical one. I checked out Kristen Stewart's Underwater. This one was a little bit disappointing for me. I did really like the ending though. Very Lovecraftian, if you will, and I thought it was pretty cool to look at. I wish most of the movie had been like that. Unfortunately, it wasn't. I gave that a three out of five. Another film that was on that found footage 22 shot show was The Tunnel. 
Uh, this one, pretty awesome as well. Good found footage stuff. Gave it a four out of five. Then I watched David Cronenberg's Shivers from the year 1975. I mean, this is a really solid infected film. I really dig Cronenberg's work. Early Cronenberg, mid Cronenberg, late Cronenberg. He's been pretty solid. Three and a half out of five. After that, Children of the Corn from the year 1984. Such a classic Stephen King film. Absolutely love The Children of the Corn. It's creepy. I love cult horror. I love religious horror. Killer Kids is pretty fun. One of the best Killer Kids films. Malachi's insane. Isaac's crazy. It's just a good time. A little bit dated, but I still love it. Four out of five. Then I watched Charlie Says from the year 2018. Charles Manson in the flesh. Pretty cool movie. Uh, has some Charlie Manson storyline going on i mean it's pretty accurate to the to Man the manson murders it's a pretty good movie three and a half out of five more cronenberg i forgot to mention shivers was part of a cronenberg episode we did on 22 shots and this was the second film we reviewed videodrome from the year 1983 videodrome is insane technology horror way ahead of its time cronenberg kind of kills it with this one four and a half out of five. The final Cronenberg film, part of that trilogy of Cronenberg movies we did on 22 Shots, The Brood from the year 1979. This was a first time watch and I really loved it. It was super weird and creepy, made a ton of sense. Again, very, very well done. Cronenberg is the man. Four and a half out of five. We have Venomous 2001. This was not very good. I don't really remember much about it. I love Killer Snake movies. I think I'd seen this one a handful of times growing up. Didn't really hold up, was pretty average. I gave it a two and a half out of five. Digging Up the Marrow from 2014. This was a Adam Green film. I'm a pretty big Adam Green fan. I've liked all of his films he's done. This one was a little disappointing the first time I seen it, but this was my rewatch and I definitely enjoyed it a little bit more than the first time. It's a found footage style movie, monsters are real, kind of imaginative. I pretty much dug it, uh, three and a half out of five. Splatter University from the year 1984. I literally remember nothing about this film. I think I have the vinegar syndrome, that's how I watched it, but I, I cannot place the movie at all. Uh, two and a half out of five is what I gave it, but I have no recollection of watching it. 1961's Voyage from the Bottom of the Sea. Uh, I don't really remember much about this one either. I just know that I remember there being fire or, or a bunch of red towards the end of the movie, like the planet was on fire or something like that. That's about it. I gave that one a three out of five. Amityville, The Evil Escapes from the year 1989. Now, I don't remember which Amityville this one is, uh, is this the one with the mirror? I don't remember. It, it, I liked it though. I like all the Amityville later sequels, surprisingly enough. I gave that one a three and a half out of five. Then we went to the theater and we saw an amazing movie that came out in the year 2019 but got its wide theatrical in 2020 and that is 1917. This movie blew me away. In fact, I just recently ordered it on 4K because of how much I loved it such an amazing movie the cinematography and shots are outstanding in that one clear five out of five one of the worst films i saw this year tales from the quad dead zone from the year 1987 this is a chester no novel film uh, he's the guy that did black devil doll from hell it's a anthology film i think i can't really remember much about it it was pretty awful shot on video 0.5 out of five and then of course Black Devil Doll from Hell, 1984. If we're gonna do one Chester film, we gotta do the other. Black Devil Doll from Hell. This was uh, part of a double feature for 22 shots. I believe shot on video volume two is what we called it. And yeah, this movie was actually a lot of fun. It was really bizarre, crazy, kind of disturbing in a weird way. I actually really enjoyed it. I gave it a six out of five. Another theatrical film, we have The Turning from 2020. And this is a 
the story based on the turning of the screw. I thought it was pretty awful, did not enjoy it at all pretty much. Uh, there was aspects that I kind of liked I guess, but by the end of the movie I was just completely burnt out and couldn't wait for it to end. And I gave that a solid average rating of 2.5 out of 5. Next up we have Amityville 1992, It's About Time, which is from the year 1992. Uh, this is the Haunted Cuckoo Clock Amityville film. Uh, I like this one, it's pretty solid, uh, the visual effects towards the end it gets a little crazy and stuff like that. I enjoy it, it's a 3 out of 5. Bet you guys are shocked that I like the Amityville sequels that much, but they're all actually not too bad. And then we got another theatrical film, and that was Gretel and Hansel. Uh, this is the Osgood Perkins take on the classic grim fairy tale of Hansel and Gretel. Uh, there's a witch, it's creepy, uh, visually stunning, amazing. The plot just didn't really do it 100% for me. This is probably the one film that I may revisit at some point soon because I think I might like it more on second watch, but I was a little bit disappointed on the first watch. I still thought it was good. I gave it a three and a half out of five. I expected a little bit more from Osgood Perkins. Of course, Anthony Perkins' son. His last two films were pretty good. So I was working through the edit and I realized I totally missed a title. I forgot about Antichrist from the year 2009. This is a Lars von Trier film and it's pretty disturbing, very graphic and violent. I gave it a four and a half out of five. And finally for January, we have The Eyes of My Mother, which was a really solid movie. There's some real creepy stuff going on in that film. Uh, it's shot in black and white. I don't really remember a ton about it, but it's very good. Four out of five. And with that said, guys, that is January in a nutshell. That is everything that I watched in January. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video and be on the lookout for... February coming in a few days. So with that said, peace out.